Hey gang, let's explore some Copper Age comics. Here's the Silver Surfer Homecoming, part of the album and graphic novel glut of the Copper Age. It reads like an annual, it's two pages less than an annual, and 13 times the cost of an annual, you do the math. Here's Wonder Man number one from 1985. This was also an era where series were started basically to maintain trademarks. It started earlier, like a, an animation company wanted to do a Spider Woman series, not having anything to do with Spider-Man, and Marvel quickly put together the Spider Woman series series to get that trademark, and Marvel actually lost their first trademark suit in 1988. They sued Heroes Comics for using Champions. A judge said that since there wasn't a Champion series since 1978, they had no right to the trademark, so they had to have these characters in print every two years to maintain the trademark. Here's the DC sampler number three. The Copper Age was the time of preview appearances. Meaningless at the time, but a big deal now. People are scouring the back issue bins for Marvel Age and samplers, trying to find any appearance that predates the actual first appearance. Here's New Mutants 94 from 1990, a book completely ready for the modern age. Wolverine guest appearance, check. Ammo belts and massive gun, check. Smoke and or dust to obscure feet, oh you better believe it. Here's Daredevil 222. And man, Frank Miller must have really boosted the sales because they don't even have to rely on Black Widow's cleavage to sell this cover. Here's Superman, volume 2, number 41. It's from March of 1990, meaning it's the first Superman of the 90s. And what better way to start than with a guest appearance by Lobo, even though it's lame looking Lobo. Here's The Punisher, number 4. Five. Jeez, they're only five issues in and they're already sick of drawing them scowling. Here's DC Comics Presents Annual Number 4 with Shazam and Superman. Thank God they didn't go with that costume for Savannah and the movie. Here's Web of Spider-Man Number 13. Spidey, no, the no-smoking laws aren't this strict. Here's Uncanny X-Men 269. Carol Danvers looks like her Rotten Tomatoes audience score, but she moves like her Rotten Tomatoes critical score. Here's Nat Rat, The Dark Nat Returns, one of many black-and-white funny animal books that tried to leech off any success from the mainstream. I don't think they had yet developed the concept of indie cred. Here's Power Lords, number two. The Copper Age was also the perfect time for generic action figure tie-ins. I mean, didn't we all own the full line of Power Lord action figures? No. No, we, it, no one owns a Power Lord. Here's Secret Origins number three, featuring Captain Marvel in the millisecond before he becomes Billy Batson. He's said Shazam in the Lightning Bolt's head right for him. And here they are, the triplets, my three copies of Tales of the Teen Titans 44. I just won the top-loaded one from Thanatos Comics. There shall come a titan. Unfortunately, it's Jericho. So thank you very much to Thanatos Comics. I'll have your link in the description and at the end of the video. And I wanted to show this for the number one skate man fan in the world, Timothy Canadian Comic Hunter. But it's not even part of the Copper Age. It's from 1983 at the ass end of the Bronze Age. And you no doubt clicked away and you're not even seeing the image of the Bronze Age Batman video I did. You're not going to hit that round subscribe button because Skate Man is such an eyesore.